Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I do work here, lady. Today, we have two great stories, so I'm hoping for your likes, and let's get started. Our first story, you need to speak with the engineer. That would be me. First of all, I'm not 100% sure this belongs here, as the site supervisor did know that I work for my company, just not the role that I hold. Also, sorry for the length. A little background. I work as an engineer for a company which manufactures large concrete structures. I won't go into detail as it's a very specialized field. Anyone familiar would know who we are. Most of our projects are supply only, meaning we fabricate the structures and the prime contractor does all the installation. We still send a representative and veteran crew member to work out any kinks. This is the first large-scale project that I'd been the design engineer on, and while I'm not a licensed structural engineer, just a civil PE, I did not stamp the drawings. I did conduct all the structural calculations and overall design. It's also important to note that the name I go by is my middle name, but for my license and business card, I have to go with my legal name. As this was my first large design, I requested to be the on-site representative for its installation. Meet the cast. Me. You should know by now. VCM, veteran crew member with my company. PM, prime contractor's project manager. SS, prime contractor's site supervisor. SE, my company's licensed structural engineer. From the first day I was on site, I had issues with the SS. I'm 25 years old, and look it. And whenever I raised questions or pointed out issues, SS would refuse to respond to me and rather explain to VCM, who's in his mid-40s, or refuse to make a correction until VCM expressed his concerns as well. This was frustrating, but since VCM is much more experienced than me when it comes to actual installation and the changes were being made, I let it slide. As I said, this was a supply-only project. Because of this, we were only responsible for supplying what was expressly laid out in our contract. One thing that was expressly left out of our contract was the hardware to connect the new construction to existing, even though the connection was designed by us. The day of the incident was the day we were set to connect the new construction to existing. As it turns out, the Prime did miss that we were not supplying the connection hardware, even though I made sure to point this out during the pre-construction meeting, and the SS decided to improvise. VCM was present for this interaction and knows that changes to structural parts cannot be changed without approval from me. After hearing what's happening, I come over to speak with SS. Me. VCM informed me that you don't have the connection hardware. What are you planning on doing here? He explains to me that his solution was to replace the 1 and an eighth inch F1554 grade 105 rod specified with a 1 inch A307 grade C rod that he had on site. Basically, he wanted to replace a very high grade structural steel rod with a smaller diameter non-structural piece. Specified rod has a capacity of 104 kips, while his replacement had a capacity of 29 kips. Me. Yeah, that's not going to work. SS, what would you know about it? Me, well, the plans clearly state what's to be used, not to mention SS interrupting. That's why I hate newbies. Yes, he literally called me a newbie, which is insulting, even if true. They just don't understand that sometimes things change and it isn't an issue. Me, well, this is a structural con SS. It doesn't matter if it's structural. I've been doing this for 20 years and I know what I'm talking about. This will work, right, VCM? I couldn't believe someone who's been in construction for 20 years would say something so ridiculous. VCM. I think we should go with what the engineer says. SS. It's overkill and the engineer will sign off on it. This is when I realize he did not remember who I am. And to be fair, it is overkill. But that's how everything is designed. Safety factors are there for a reason, people. Me. I'm going to need you to stop work until the correct materials can be obtained. This set him over the edge, swearing a berating effing dumb effing kid who doesn't know what he's talking about. After about a minute of this, I'm done, and tell him I'll be calling the PM and he'll stop the work. SS, like hell you will. He calls the PM before I get a chance and berates me more over the phone, insults my company for sending someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, etc. Apparently, PM doesn't remember who I am either, and SS is finally told to come to the job trailer, and the two of them will call SE about the change. I sit back and wait, knowing that SE will not sign off on this. 
My SE hates having his time wasted and sent them back to me. SS. SE told us to get the contact information for the design engineer from you, and we'll discuss the issue with them, confirming they forgot who I am. Seeing what my SE did. Sure, I have his business card right here. Mind if I sit in on the phone call? SS couldn't really refuse, so we walked back to the job trailer. The look on SS's face when they called the cell number on my card and I answered, this is my legal name, what can I help you with, was worth all of the abuse that SS had been giving me for the last week. I got an apology from PM and I'm fairly certain that SS was chewed out badly as he refused to make eye contact with me and was very sheepish for the remainder of the install. We ended up supplying the hardware needed at a massive upcharge and finished the project on time. Just to clarify, I'd been introduced to PM as the design engineer at the kickoff meeting and to the pair of them at the pre-con meeting. And our second story. Why are you guys hiring children? Hello. So this happened a few years back when I was 16 and fresh out of high school. My father had a small food place at an airport that he had closed a few years prior because he couldn't manage it for crap and eventually it went bankrupt. My brother dropped out of university and I'd graduated from high school only a few months ago, so we decided to try our hand at it. We took a loan from the family, something we greatly disliked doing in the first place, but really he was a former uni student and I'd just gotten out of school, we weren't exactly rolling in money right then. Anyway, we managed to set up shop again, gave the place a makeover and opened for business. The first few weeks were slow until our old clientele got word we were running again. It was on the 12th week of our opening for business again when this woman appears, approaching the counter like some Cthulhu to some poor ship. I'd seen her around the shop when my father was in charge, so I greeted her with a cheery, Good morning, ma'am. What can I get you? She looks very unimpressed at me, then looks away to the display cases. I figure she's not in the mood for idle talks and wait for her to browse. She pauses at some of our items, and I take a step in that direction to start explaining what is and what's in it and how it's made and all that stuff. She immediately backs away, ignoring me, and goes to sit at a table. Okay, then. An employee of mine, Andrea, lovely woman, she never treated me as a child, even though I was a decade younger, nor did she try to suck up to me for being her boss, gave me a weird look, and I shrugged subtly. Go see what she wants in a few minutes, if she hasn't ordered by then, I tell her, and she nods. We continue serving the other customers coming in, and about 10 minutes later, Andrea heads over. They seem to be conversing well. The woman looks a lot happier talking to Andrea than she did when I approached her. But what can you do? I'm fully aware I look like a kid, and I don't falter for being skeptical. But really, was basic manners really too much to ask? Andrea comes back over and tells me what Cthulhu wants, and goes back over with it once I've boxed it up and made sure her coffee lid's on tight. I forgot about her during the next rush that comes in, and when I do remember her, she's coming over to the counter to pay. I greet her again, the customary, hope you liked it, that'll be $2,000. Calm down, y'all's American exchange rate makes that about 10 of your dollars and 9 and change. Anyway, she gives me an utter look of loathing and a front that I can do nothing but freeze. Because, oh God, what have I said to offend her? Did I get the calculation wrong? Did That's too much. She says, I'm panicking harder now, but managed to punch it into the register again. It was right. So I turn to the screen to show her what she got and how much they each cost, and she gets positively red in the face. No, these prices are wrong. I've been coming here for years, and these things always came to $1,620, or $7.74 U.S. dollars. Remember, the value of currency is different here. I realize she means when my father was running the show, and I carefully tell her that the prices have been raised slightly due to our country's slowly but surely declining economy. But I didn't tell her all that. She is not having it and demands to speak with someone who knows what they're doing. Look, I'm 16 years old, I'm 5 foot 2, and I've never been yelled at by a complete stranger before. I'm standing there unsure what to do, wondering if I need to become the owner and do owner things. Because as fun and liberating as it is sometimes, I never like being rude to another person, let alone a customer. Andrea hears the commotion from the back, through the window, and comes around to help. Owner or not, I am, for all intents and purposes, new to this game. There's a reason we hired someone with seven plus years of experience. Everything alright, she asks. And Cthulhu on stilts just, finally, are you the manager? 
This girl has no idea what she's doing. Everything is overpriced. Why are you guys hiring children? Come on, man. I've been at this place for years. I'm good friends with the owner. Ah, there it is. But God darn it. Am I supposed to be nice to these people? So I go, no, the last owner doesn't run this place anymore. It's under completely new ownership and management. Andrea isn't the manager. I get cut off because, of course, I do. No, the name XXX is still on the paperwork. Lord help us, she's part of the branch that we pay our rent to. Yes, that's because he's my... Oh, look, cut off again. So you're lying. It's still the same owner. You admit it. Yep, I can handle losing $2,000 today. My father's name is on the paperwork because there would have been too much of a hassle to transfer it in both mine and my brother's names. I'm the co-owner. I'm also the manager. I'm also the cashier. I also sweep and lock up the place. I'm not sure what you think it is I do here besides look pretty, though I can't fault you for it, but I'm in charge. And if you can't accept that things can change, like prices going from $1,620 to $2,000 in the span of four years, then I don't think you should be at an airport. Flight tickets are fairly expensive for someone so unwilling to spend $380. I'm on a roll, and I know I'm about to run out of whatever irritation is fueling me, so I point to the wall where my graduation thing is. In the eyes of the law and who may or may not want to hire me, in this case, who I may or may not want to hire, really, I am an adult. I never forget this because it was easily one of the things I'm most proud of. Because next I said, and if you have a problem with me or how I run the place, I've been working very hard in the past few weeks. You can leave and pretend this building does not exist whenever you walk past. Needless to say, she left. Red in the face and absolutely fuming, but she left. I'm not going to lie. I gave myself the rest of the day off because, hell, was I distracted replaying the whole thing in my mind so many times. For a while after, I was absolutely mortified at myself. Now, it's just meh. I've had to do it to three other people since. I'm now 19 and look approximately 0% different. It's just lost its edge. I don't like having to do it, of course. Anyone leaving unhappy makes me uncomfortable. But if someone's a jerk, then they're a jerk. They can be a jerk outside of my establishment. On the brighter side of things, we paid our family back within the first three months. I hope you guys enjoyed the story, and if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. This is very important to me, and I'll see you in the next video.